And he was trying to thread the needle uh, between the outlook for a slower economy, his knowledge that the market uh, indeed was forecasting uh, worse outcomes than the Fed, and telling telling uh, us that he he did in fact he has in fact incorporating that idea that the there is a, a lower market uh, outlook for the economy, but sticking with his committee. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's interesting. I wonder what Rick would think about this. If Chairman Powell could have put the news in any better a way, because the news is not what the market wanted to hear. Uh, I think the market wanted to hear the Fed completely capitulate. I think there was very little chance that was actually going to happen. But the Fed did not capitulate. And so, uh, you know, Powell's got a committee that sees two hikes next year. He did suggest that if the economy doesn't perform as they expect, that they won't be hiking. Uh, but I think... Rick, am I wrong that the market wants the growth and no hikes, right? That's the, the way the market wants it there. Yeah, I, I think there's some gray in there be, be, between total capitulation by the Fed and what we saw today. And I really think that it's possible that that's where Jay Powell wants to go. But I don't think he communicated that. You know, there's a lot of ways he could have been more dovish about a pause without giving up the hawkishness about normalization, right. uh, you know, maybe stressing that after the December I, I 2015 example, hike, we waited a whole year. Rick, you know, can I, just, can I mean, just respond a little bit on that, which is, yeah, go ahead. remember, he's the guy who's got to stand at the podium next month after the market goes up 2,000 points and say, well, you know, we made a mistake by changing our forecast by... So you, you know how this works, And that's the problem. Works, that's Rick. the problem, Steve. That isn't a problem, but they think it is. That's it the is guidance trap that it he's a, in. If he I, misjudged, so then he states it well, or Well, we respectfully back disagree. But remember, Rick, it was October right. 3rd when the market was at an all-time high, right? And that's when they were saying the economy was so great and people were on stocks, on our air saying buy stocks, buy stocks, buy stocks. And all of a sudden, now we're near, you know, we're 10% or whatever it is off of but the all-time high. But what else happened in early October, Steve? What do. else happened in early October? That's the point of gravity where all the central bank's inputs of liquidity started to turn. Early October. I don't know why that fact isn't mentioned more. And, th and that's where, if I, if I could just jump in there, that's where Chairman Powell actually stepped it up and talked about almost a robotic raising of rates and he had to back off that so it's your exact date rick and steve october 3rd is where powell came out ultra uh, uh, hawkish and that's why the markets tipped off today it's his uh, inability to explain why inflation hasn't been there and the robotic unwind now we went from robotic rises to robotic qt